gonna get that wire in there this time. I'm gonna get that thing in there. Ah! Ah! If you're new to homesteading, well, or if you're uh, old to homesteading but haven't uh, set things up yet, well, after you get yourself some knowledge about electrical work, you're gonna want to get yourself some electrical tools. So here we're gonna be talking about the tools. I've got a uh, tool pouch and tool bag, and this handles pretty much most of the things that I need to do around the place. Or needs is a good set of electrical tools. Need to get in there and get the business done. And you need the pouch to carry it in. So here I'm just going to go over uh, for a few minutes the uh, my basic electrical tool set. Uh, I've carried my pouch and the bag here. Now I had a little advantage in that while I was going to college uh, well, first of all, I grew up in a family doing a lot of electronics, so I grew up from a young age playing with electronics. And uh, when I went off to, and I had my ham radio operator's license and all that before, uh, before college, I went off to college, I worked as a campus electrician. And in fact, uh, it was a great job. It was just wonderful. I could work a few hours in between classes. Uh, I could just, you know, I could go in and pick up job sheets and uh, run wire, fix lights, ballasts, all that sort of thing. Uh, had keys to everything on campus. It was really sweet. And uh, just spent a lot of time working up in the dorms. Well, they, uh, they actually gave me a set of tools, pretty much like this bag right here. Though I noticed not too many uh, tools in here original. I, I was thinking most were, but as I came to look at it, uh, there's only a couple of them that are. But uh, we're going to go through this real quickly. I'll show you some close-ups. And uh, we'll, just, we'll just go through the tool set real quick. So, okay, so we're going to go through this mostly in a uh, close-up mode. Now, I'll say, first of all, that the uh, pouch, like normally I wear this pouch on my right-hand side. And I keep the tools in a specific order all the time, kind of order of need. And I keep things where I can get them fast and without even looking I can just reach down and grab them when it's strapped on my side. One of the tools you need is a good voltage tester. Now I prefer an electromechanical voltage tester. Uh, this one's made by Knopf. Uh, we used to call this a Wiggy because uh, that was there was actually another brand that was made by Wiggy and that's what everyone got to call them. Uh, uh, now this this one's 40 years old. This is the one I got at the electric shop but uh, it has a coil inside, and basically it has to draw a certain amount of current before it has a little reading here that'll drop down. It's actually like a solenoid that activates. It can tell you DC or AC. It goes from 115 to 600 volts. Uh, very convenient. Uh, it's better than a voltmeter in many ways, uh, in that it actually has to draw quite a bit of current before it'll get the reading. So if you just have stray voltage on a line, it's it, uh, it'll kind of derate that, so to speak. So in many ways, I prefer these over a, a voltmeter because a voltmeter is a high impedance. It's a high impedance reading, which means that, like I say, it'll read stray voltages. So anyway, an electromechanical voltmeter, good pair of needle nose pliers, or a fair pair of needle nose pliers. These aren't uh, great brand names, but yeah, something with a nice long needle, but strong enough and powerful enough that you can work with. Uh, everything with insulated handles. Make sure you get the insulated handles. Just a pair of cutters. I used to have ones with notches in here, but they don't tend to make them as much. If they have notches, get larger pliers because you need more leverage. But these are just for cutting, so I just got some short ones. And these are lineman's pliers. These actually were original to the kit that I got in the electric shop. And they've got a nice uh, big flat end on it. You often use these for twisting wires, but they're also used for like a hammer. When you're pounding in staples and such, you use this as a hammer. It's uh, They're heavy enough. And it actually has a crimping tool, and you know, you gotta 
pretty strong cutter in there. Pretty heavy tool. And normal things, you know, crescent wrench. Extra cutter. I actually have a, I like these uh, DeWalt box cutters. They're pretty nice. Assortment of screwdrivers, of course. You know, Phillips, a couple sizes of common. And I suggest that if you don't buy insulated ones, I would suggest you buy ones that are electrical ones. They're insulated. They have rubber handles as well. This type of rubber handle like this is better than uh, these plastic handles. So anyhow, yeah, I got some electrical ones we can. These I just insulated with some uh, uh, shrink tubing, which uh, is better than nothing. And a better wire stripper. This one actually you can see has gauges down all the way from 10 up to 20 gauge. Uh, nut bolt cutters, things like that in it. Works pretty well. Of course, I always keep uh, electrical tape on here. I always go for Scotch 33. Used to use Slipknot Gray, but it's kind of hard to find. But uh, anyway, uh, Scotch kind of hard to find. Actually, I haven't seen it in years. Uh, <laughs> the Scotch 33 is real flexible. It sticks well. I use it on all the important aspects. If I have, like I'm just running insulation around a pipe, then I'll use the cheaper Scotch. Here's what the uh, Scotch Super 33 looks like. And here's the regular Scotch. The uh, less expensive. I mean, it's a little spendy. I think it's like three bucks something uh, container, and these are probably a buck fifty or so a piece, two bucks a piece. I don't know, but anyway, they're far cheaper. Oh, and uh, one thing you notice that uh, good electricians uh, usually have a small roll as well as a big roll on there. <laughs> Many times when you're working, you'll find there's places you get into small spaces, uh, like in between a pipe and a wall, or in between something. So you keep your small rolls for those specific duties. Use your big rolls when you can, but then you save them when they're small for special duty. So that's it on the pouch. You got a carrier here for a hammer. I definitely like the uh, web belt with the pouch because you're often working up on ladders and you want to have all your tools with you and accessible. So invest in a good pouch. Now we get to the tool bag. I used to carry some of the items that uh, if I'm doing something more complex, for example, uh, quick to whip down through this. Homesteaders particularly need one of these. Every homesteader needs one of these. It's a kilowatt. A kilowatt allows you, you, you plug it in, and then you plug an appliance onto it, and you're able to read uh, the voltage on the line, the amperage it's drawing, how many watts, the hertz. Uh, you can also read the kilowatt hours. So you can uh, put this on an appliance, if it's 110 volts, and uh, let it run and be checking how many kilowatts it's using. You know, let it run for six hours and figure out how many kilowatts, figure out how many kilowatts an hour on average it's using. So you start start getting a read on what everything in your house draws. Uh, it's gonna be very important when you start figuring out your solar requirements and how you may want to pare down if you're going off grid or even if you're on grid. We've been you know trying to work down our amount of uh, electrical our electrical dependence. So, very important. Kilowatt. You can find them on eBay. I think they're 20, well, when I bought that, it was like 20 something dollars. Yeah, assortment of wire nuts, various sizes, of course. More electrical tape. Now, here's something I thought was really going to be handy. It's Sperry. It's a, called a wire tracker. And the idea is you can connect connect any of these connectors. You've got a stub connector, you've got, this is a cable connection, phone, uh, RG, uh, you know, cable connector, as well as regular pigtail. So you can connect this to a wire that's non-active, and then it's going to uh, insert a tracer signal into that line, and then you track it with this, and with this little piece here, and you're going to follow this along the wall or whatever and track where the wiring is. I shouldn't find that it, it went for a very long distance. Now part of that may be that our walls, we not only have drywall, but uh, the ceilings are covered with also a half an inch of plaster. I won't go into why they did that, but anyway, uh, I, I just really didn't get it to go very far. 10, 12 feet, I needed more like 30, 40, 50 feet. So yeah, that just really didn't fill the bill.
just a bunch of assortment of screws for electrical, just different size electrical screws. You're always finding you get something, you're missing screws. You know, I've got screws for uh, plates over the top, screws for the switches, just, you know, various assortment there. Here's a tool for uh, testing uh, cable, cable line in your house. Oh, no, that's not the one. I've got two of them that look the same. <laughs> this is a plumb bob. How archaic! Yeah, sometimes if you want to run a piece of uh, uh, conduit or something, you kind of like to have it vertical. So I always keep a plumb bob in my electrical kit. Very inexpensive and uh, handy when you need it. Ah, oh, here's the other one I was talking about. This is a uh, for testing a cable line. Very similar, inserts a signal into it. So that unscrews. So one end goes on one end, this goes to the other end. So you're, you know, for testing cable lines. Didn't have to do any testing here in this house. So that was nice. Again, fairly inexpensive, useful certain times. A uh, set of bits for your screwdrivers and drill bits. It's just a simple little uh, tester, continuity tester. Uh, basically, you're going to use on non-active lines again. You connect this to one side, and then you're just going to connect these to the other side of the line. And be sure that they go through. Sometimes when you're running new wires and you're not not sure where they're going, or let's say. More likely, it's when someone else has run a bunch of wires and they haven't marked them, as we found here. So I had to go through and figure out what went where, why, and how. These are cheap, 15 bucks or so. I don't know, but quite inexpensive. So, easy to use, easy to have. Uh, probably one of my favorite pieces of equipment here is this. It's called a breaker finder. Sperry breaker finder. Two parts. Now this works on active lines. This part here gets inserted into an outlet. It's also an outlet tester. So you insert it in the outlet and it'll be able to tell you whether you have an open ground, open neutral, open hot, hot ground reverse, hot neutral reverse, or it's correct, depending upon the light pattern that shows up here. And it also has a test for GFCI, so you can test that as well. But the main thing with this is you put this in, you've got a outlet somewhere, and you want to know what breaker that goes to. Plug it in, go to your breaker panel with this, turn this guy on, and it'll have, uh, I've got the tape over that to prevent it from, sometimes it'll want to switch on when it's in the pouch and then it ends up dead. So you see there's some uh, lights there, a little red light. Now, so you go over your breaker panel, this thing extends out further, and uh, with that on one end, you take this little rod piece here and you run this up the line of breakers and you'll find as you get closer to the breaker that it's uh, that the signals coming to from the little connector from this connector signals being generated out of this as you get closer to the breaker on the panel this thing will start emitting a, a greater beeping sound and the lights will move up more towards maximum so typically when you get up hit the breaker that's the right one then typically you're at maximum so, and just to be sure you're not getting the wrong breaker, then at that point, you flip off the breaker, and it'll completely stop. The signal goes, whoop, drops down, if you've got the right breaker. If you don't have the right breaker, well, then you keep looking and then, you know, switch another one. But it allows you to figure out exactly which breaker goes to which outlet in a hurry. You can do it by yourself or have someone on the other end who just keeps plugging it from one outlet to the next. And you can mark every single outlet in your place know exactly where everything goes to in your breaker box. Very handy, specifically for a fixer-upper like we have here. In a new house, not such a concern. But when people have been willy-nilly about how electrical is run, it's a very good thing. Turn that off. So yeah, I'd highly recommend this. This is a Breaker Finder CS61200 by Sperry. Oh, and uh, along with that, I've got numerous uh, connectors. One that uh, that works with that. Yeah, let me get back that real quick. You don't always have an outlet. Let's say you're testing a light fixture or something else. So here's one that'll work in a light fixture. 
I can plug that into a light fixture and then plug it into here and it'll send the signal and allow me to test to find out where the light connects into. Uh, this also is just for has a regular pigtail. If I have some uncommitted wires, I can connect those up and then connect this into it and use it that way. So it's got some adapters. If you have a house, not everything's going to wire to an outlet. It may wire to something else. So anyway, I just want to be ready for that. Made good use of those. And uh, here in this pouch, I also keep another. I have the, the tester on my belt, but I also keep a regular voltmeter. Uh, these are very actually inexpensive these days. This is the next tech and you know it's not the best brand, but they are they are very serviceable and inexpensive. I'm just amazing what you get for it. Uh, besides having the normal voltage current functions, it's got uh, you can measure temperature as well. The uh, frequency, you can do capacitance measurements, uh, ohms, measure resistance. The uh, has a hold function, so you can hold a reading. Uh, my favorite part of it, because I have other voltmeters, I mainly bought it because I didn't have one that had a current clamp like this. And it has a 20 amp setting and a 200 amp setting, so you can clamp it around a wire and it'll tell you what current's going through that wire. Now, be careful that you're not, like if you're trying to do Romex, you got two wires where the signals are in opposing phase, so they'll cancel each other out. So you have to use it in a place where you have a separate wire, like in a break, breaker box where you got separate wires, you can just click this on and you see how much current is going down that line. You know, it's really handy. Comes with a temperature sensor as well. But I'd highly recommend one of these. I can't say I remember the price, but I think it was in the uh, $30 range. Good voltmeters maybe are close to $100 for really nice ones, but you may not need that. And of course I keep other things in here, stubby screwdrivers, I keep uh, staples, and here's a non-contact. Klein tools, voltage tester, non-contact voltage tester. So you can just get this up close and it'll read whether there's voltage there or not. See the green lights on, you can get it up close to something and then you know it changes color when you when it senses electrical current nearby, electrical field. So those those are pretty nice. Well there's one thing you need even more than these tools. And that's to get some knowledge. Don't just jump in and start sticking your hands into the circuits. That'd be a bad thing. I mean, you may not turn into a crispy critter, but uh, you can get hurt, you can get killed, and you could be teaching those around you to be uh, handling it inappropriately and uh, where they might be at rest too. So get in there, study it. It doesn't take long. Learn a little bit about the electricity before you get in and start digging your hands into it. And uh, speaking of crispy critters, uh, watch, watch our other video. Uh, it's called Don't Make an Ash Out of Yourself. I'm telling a, what a story of something that happened while I was at the electric shop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't make an ash out of yourself. All right, here, signing off. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Beep, 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 beep. And uh, remember about the... Uh, there's like a little announcement bell. When you uh, subscribe, you can select notifications to have notifications sent to you. That's the little bell symbol next to the subscribe. So don't forget about that. If you want to be notified when we have a new video, yeah, please click on that and set up your notifications. And uh, they can turn themselves off, so uh, periodically check those. All right, you're signing off. Hasta la projecto.